Hello, it's that time again. Time to ship. Today I have two very expensive and very breakable items and I have to get a little creative and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So let's go. Okay, today I just have two things to ship, but each one of these items sold for over a hundred dollars. So uh, I want them to get there. Not that I don't ever want things to not get there. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, but I don't want to claim on these because I didn't package it correctly. I want them to make it to their destination and I want happy customers. Uh, so once again, I gathered my shipping materials ahead of time and found that I didn't have exactly the right size of box that I needed for this vase. So I'm going to have to get a little creative and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So neither one of these is easy. So we'll just start with this one. Okay. Um, the reason this is so expensive, this is art glass. This is a uh, a Michael Nuro, 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 N-O-U-R-O-T. I don't know how you say it. He's probably French and it's like Nuro. I don't know. If you know, let me know in the comments. Um, but this is a very expensive piece of art glass. Um, you can even see this looks, it looks dirty, but it's not. It was made to have this look to it. Um, anyway, I finally uh, went back and forth with the buyer. I was asking 150 they came at me with 90. I came back at them with 100 because I didn't want to lose the sale. And they came back at 95, which I kind of sat on for a little while and then thought, you know what? Can't go broke making a profit. Okay, so it's selling. It's going. It's out the door. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this. And now I am going to wrap this first in this thin foam. I just really like the foam for the really expensive items. I think it shows that it took a little more care. It's a perception. It's all by her perception. So we are going to tape the ends. And this is just my, this is my first level of of wrapping. Ugh. I am so happy I found my handheld dispenser. This would be really hard without it. Okay, first level. Now I am going to use bubble wrap. And I, you're going to see me use a lot of it. Because this is an item that definitely needs to be wrapped to sustain a two-story drop. And I know that sounds outrageous, but really that is what you have to be thinking about when you do this. So I'm just gonna cocoon this little bad boy like there's no tomorrow. also helps if it shifts within the box you have that extra protection if it gets close to an end okay there we go that Now it's in its very safe cocoon. Um, I know this is just a little card table, but with a hundred dollar plus piece, I wouldn't do that unless I felt it was protected thoroughly. Okay, so now 
This is ultimately the box it's going to go in, and I'm going to show you how it's going to fit in this box. You can see lots of room on all sides, but I still, I still want that extra layer of protection. So I'm going to do a little double boxing trick, but I didn't have a box that fit in this other than these shoe boxes, and the shoe box was not tall enough to work on its own. So, and my tape is coming loose here. So, I am going to get creative here. Now, I can smush this bubble wrap down a little bit. Now, one shoe box was not enough. So, I'm going to take off this lid that's attached okay so now i basically have two shoe boxes and i'm going to smush this into the two shoe boxes i don't know if you can see what i'm doing there but i'm just there we go that's a snug fit i'm smushing it down on there okay now what I need to do, I need to go around with my tape and tape these together while I keep smushing at the same time. That could get a little tricky, but we can do it. Smushy, smushy. All right. And I'm going to go once the other way as well. done, I've given this item some extra protection, okay? It's very safely in this. It's, it's wrapped on its own. It's now got a layer of boxing around it. And now I'm going to put it in this box. So I have to see what the dimension is, how much padding. And I have I have a pretty good, um, I'd say about an inch on the sides and a couple inches on each end, which I feel really good about. And then also I have room top and bottom. So I'm going to put some padding on the bottom. This is my shock absorber. Actually, you know what? I just found this. Ooh, let's get even more creative. I forgot I had this. So this, I can pretty much cut in half, hmm, which one do that right there. Okay, this is corrugated cardboard, but it's really lightweight. It's like air filled, but it's still going to add a lot of protection. You know, I think I'm going to use these on the ends. So I'll have to cut this one down just a little bit more. Ah, you didn't cut. 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 There you go. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm going to do. That's going to save me some packaging materials. I should have more of that somewhere. All right. All right, so we are going to Cushion the bottom, like so. Let's see, I want even top and even bottom, so I can add a little more down there. Now what, let's see, I've got some of this biggie bubble, biggie bubble, let's put that down in there. Yeah, I'm liking that, I'm liking that. Now I've got to put stuff on the sides. So, yeah. so this is where I'm going to put these pieces now on either end. Oh, and I made them a little taller now, didn't I? Oops. Well, let's just fix that. Well, now I can actually use the scraps, too. 
Might as well. And I know this seems like a lot of hassle, but this is the thing when you sell something with a huge profit margin, you don't feel as resentful of that extra time you have to spend on stuff like this. All right, now I'm going to cushion that side and bring it around. And I'm going to cushion this side. And you see, I've like I put bubble wrap all the way around. To the point I'm making this box bulge a little bit, which I can reposition that a little bit so we don't have quite that going. I need a little more on this side. All right. All right. I feel really good about that. Now I need some on the top. And I just happen to have some scraps of this big bubble here. more small bubble. All right, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about this. You know, I'm gonna put just a little bit more because I want to be able to press down. Really want to be able to press this down and not have that move at all. Boom, okay. I feel really good about that. Now this outer box is not a super sturdy box. So I'm going to give it extra tape to give it some strength. One side. Now I just found this label over here. I'm going to take it off and now I'm going to go over on this side again to give it that extra strength. Now, remember, I've double boxed this. I would never ship it in just this one box. No way, no how. Oops. This is also going to be going FedEx home. And let me tell you something I learned about, I'll stop that so you can hear me. Something I learned about FedEx home versus FedEx ground. Okay, so you got ground and home. The home drivers are contractors, meaning they, I think they like lease their trucks and their equipment, and they also have to pay claims out of their pocket. That was the big difference. And I heard this directly from a FedEx home driver. Okay. This did not come from secondhand information. I got this right from the horse's mouth. That's the big difference. The ground is run by employees of FedEx. They don't have as much skin in the game. So if you've got something like this, send it via FedEx home because they take it a lot more seriously about getting that item to your customer in good condition because it comes out of their pocket if it gets broken or stolen. Okay. You need to come up with a taping song. even forget where my top is. I think it's here. But let me take this off of here because that doesn't need to be on there. Now, this is important. I don't want my label on the side because I want this to stay with this side up because I know the way I packaged it, the most packaging, the most padding is top, 
bottom here and here so if I put it here that's the lesser of the padding so I want them to stack it with the label that's what they do where they want to see the labels so the, the best likelihood of that happening is if I put the label on top which means I need to cover this up that's the the drawback about using used boxes is you usually are going to have some old stuff on them. And this eBay tape is really transparent. <laughs> so it does make it a little hard to cover up, but I think I think that's good to go. They won't get confused. No confusion. Okay. Now the other thing, I don't have any fragile stickers. Or I'd have no problem putting a fragile sticker on this. Um, that's for the customer. That is not for the post office. Just keep that in mind. But I am going to put a, this side up so they know to keep this. this side up and hopefully that helps with the padding issues and gets it there safely and hopefully the FedEx driver doesn't want to play a claim and will follow instructions okay so one down one down now the other item I have is a super heavy piece of pottery doesn't look like much does it even see that that's an old label hmm. um, this is a piece of I want to say Edwards David Edwards was it oh gosh now I can't even remember um, it's a, a mid-century potter and that's a label that's not a damage um, and this sold for $99 on auction I was hoping it would go a little higher had I put it on fixed price it may have gone higher um, eventually, but I got a quick flip on it because I didn't pay that much. <laughs> so let's go ahead and bubble him up. And again, expensive item. I'm going to use my foam if I have enough left here. I've got to find me some more foam. I have just enough. Just enough. Now with this, a heavy piece, you got to think about it's going to shift in a box pretty easily. So you have to be aware of that. And I'm going to use this big piece of bubble here. And I'm going to do the same thing I did the last one and I am just gonna roll this up and I'm probably gonna go both directions with this. So about halfway through I'll cut this and go the other way but I want it really 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 padded okay so I've gone that way where's my perforation boom okay there's no need to tape every little layer of the bubble wrap it's it's kind of annoying for your customer to have to unwrap it with all that tape so I try to just let the the bubble hold the bubble which it will do boom if I can get a straightener there we go and I just tape at the end so this feels really really good the likelihood of this breaking, very slim, very slim. It would take a lot. You have to really try. All right, so there is my package. Now what I did find 
I'm not going to double box this, and I'm going to tell you why. I found this box oh, with nails in it. I guess I should probably take the nails out. This box is really super, it's like a double box. I don't know if you can see that edge. It's double corrugated. It's a heavy box. It is 12 by 12 by 12, which is the max size I can go. Let me see if that, I'm looking for the, um, here it is, the gross weight. This could hold 100 pounds. It's got a 48 pound crush test. So it's going to take a lot to crush this box. It's super, super sturdy. If I, like, unlike this box, which is not, oh, I, let me see if it says, I probably covered it up. I can't read it. Yeah, this one, okay, so this one has a 26 pound crush test. Yeah, so this is like a double box already. So I need to do what I do with everyone is line the bottom. And I'm still on the hunt for packing peanuts. Still on the hunt. Although with this item, the bubble wrap is actually a better layer. Styrofoam would have actually been the best um, because it wouldn't shift and move at all. Packing peanuts would have the potential to shift and move around with the weight of this. So they would not have been my first choice for this package. Um, I do love packing peanuts for oh, bubble wrap when you're fighting. Um, I do love packing peanuts for lighter weight items because they're less likely to change the position of the item in the box. I'm running out of bubble wrap. Think a trip to, uh, no, I went up and reached out. I'll order some online. I got into that point. This lasted me a long time. When you use this for your, for your actual filler, it goes mighty fast. All right, so placing our item down in here, and you can see I, I want it in the center of the box. So I'm going to push it down a little bit. Looks like it's still going to be in the center, and I am just going to bubble wrap, bubble wrap, bubble wrap. I'm pretty much going to use up the bubble wrap. Yes, I am. It's all good. But I always get excited at the end because look, now I have this really cool cardboard piece that I can ship a piece of art or something in. Woo, look at that, going on the shelf. It's always a, always a light at the end of the tunnel, right? Okay, so I'm going to first put this all around the edges. And as you can see, I still need more bubble wrap. So, I will be back. I have to go hunt down some more. Okay, I found enough scraps to finish the box off. Even found, like, some of these pillows. And I know now when I press this down. I got to really squeeze it down to make it close. And seal it up. I got writing on this box that I'm covering up. There we go. And I'm gonna go just once this way, just for just for giggles.
There we go. Boom. Ready to go. I will tell you one more thing. The rating on the box makes a difference if you're making a claim. I know it does for UPS. I'm going to assume it does for FedEx. I don't know about the post office. Insurance claims are getting harder and harder to win because they're now questioning the packaging materials. So you need to be able to say what kind of a box was used. And if I say, hey, that box had a 48-pound crush test rating, boom, that holds a lot of clout. If this were to get broken, it's not going to get broken. I am like 99.99% sure this is going to make it okay. I'm about 99.95% sure this one's going to make it okay. But over 22 years, I got a pretty good track record. Very, very little breakage in my days. And it all has to do, you guys, with just cushioning and using the proper materials and getting your box done right. And you can get this stuff shipped. I'm telling you, there's big money in this stuff that a lot of sellers don't want to deal with because it's kind of a pain, as you can see. Um, but the profit margins are ridiculous. You can get it at the auction houses, the estate sales, the yard sales. Other sellers leave this stuff alone because they don't want to deal with it. I'll deal with it. I love it. I love big profits. So with that, go be profitable and make it fun. See you on the next one.